All right, now we're going to talk about um, what really, like which elementary steps determine the rate, okay? The elementary step that occurs the slowest is the one that determines the overall rate of the reaction. Because if you think about it, um, you know, they're going to compare it to driving, um, which is probably a good example for you. Like, if you're going somewhere where you expect it to take 15 minutes, but there's an accident on Route 1, and suddenly, like, going half a mile is going to take you an additional 15 minutes, right? Well, that's going to be the rate-determining step for your drive, okay? Because suddenly, how long it takes you to get there is going to be doubled as a result of it took you, like, the same amount of time to go half a mile as it took you to go the other 10 miles. They're using an example of toll plazas, okay? If toll plaza A is backed up, um, but toll plaza B is smooth sailing, then toll plaza A is your rate determining step because that is going to slow you down. In this other um, example, you can see that A is moving, moving a little bit more smoothly, but it's B that's backed up. So B will be your rate determining step, okay? Um, so you have to write the rate law from the perspective of the rate determining step, okay? And then like we showed with that ozone example, when you add up the elementary steps to equal the overall reaction, it should be consistent with the stoichiometry of that actual equation, okay? Again, intermediates are made, so there are products in one step, then they're used up, which means they're reactants in another step, okay? Catalysts, just so you know, um, are used and regenerated, which means a catalyst will appear as a reactant initially, and then it'll appear as a product later on, okay? Um, so let's do this. Let's, um, oh, let's see. We'll keep going and then we'll do some examples, okay? So the next slide is going to introduce you to a concept um, or to a mechanism with a slow initial step, all right? So what they're saying here is here's the overall equation. NO2 plus carbon monoxide produces NO plus carbon dioxide. And then they're showing you the rate law, okay? So if you look at this rate law, the rate law does not match the overall equation. Why? Well, because the rate law is coming from the slow step, and we're not seeing the elementary steps on this slide. We're just seeing the overall reaction, and we're not looking at the actual mechanism. The rate law comes from the actual mechanism, okay? So it says if the first step is the rate determining step, the coefficients on the reactant side are the same as the order in the rate law. That's important. Okay, so only if, if your rate law is coming from the first step, which it is because they're telling us that it does, then that means that the number of moles you have as coefficients in that balanced equation for that elementary step will also be your order in the rate law. Okay, um, now keep in mind for overall equations, Stoichiometry is not the order, okay? Um, but when we're breaking it down to the elementary steps, sometimes it is. So you're going to have to be careful to keep those two ideas separate, okay? Um, and then, um, so if we know that this is the rate law, and we know that the rate law is coming from the initial step, then that's telling us that we have two nitrogen dioxide molecules. So we know how to start that slow step. It has to be NO2 plus NO2, okay? Um, which then gives, like, then you would think about how it would make. You're not going to have to, like, figure out the products for yourself. This is just going through this with you. So it's showing you the first step makes NO plus NO3. Don't freak out about whether or not you'll have to predict products. You won't, okay? What they're trying to show you is you don't see NO3 in that overall equation 
back here, okay? There's no NO3 in that reaction, which means NO3 must have been used up, okay? Which makes it an intermediate. So this tells you that if NO3 got produced in this initial step, it must get used in the next step. And so it does, it gets reacted with carbon monoxide and that's why we don't see it anymore, okay? Um, and so then if you add those up, you will see your overall equation um, that we started with initially, okay? Um, again, since the first step is the slowest step, it gives the rate law. If you add up all the individual steps, you get the stoichiometry. Each step balances, and you want it to be a plausible mechanism, which means, like, keep in mind, unimolecular and bimolecular processes are more likely than termolecular. So, like, you shouldn't have a step that's super fancy um, with lots of things colliding simultaneously because that's just not likely, and that's what they mean by plausible, okay? Uh, a couple notes about intermediates. So we talked, just so you know, and this is obviously like a more complicated graph. We looked at graphs that just had one hill and then made products, right? But if you're looking at a graph of the mechanism, then you're saying, okay, we're not just looking at this simply. We're looking at it for each reaction that's occurring until it gets to products. So if we're looking at two processes, we start at reactants, energy gets you up here to the transition state it makes the intermediate which then reacts so that's kind of like a second set of reactants right which then react to make a different transition state and make products okay so your intermediates are going to be present in the valleys on the graph okay and if you had like a three-step process then you would have two valleys before you would have the product okay all right um, I don't know what happened on this slide. Apparently the arrows uh, didn't translate. I don't know why. So just know whenever you see that like E with the accent mark on it, it means an arrow, okay? So for the equation 2NO plus BR2 yields 2NOBR, the rate law for the reaction is found to be this, okay? Um, so what type of molecularity is that? Is that uni, is that bi, or is it ter? Okay, how many things do you have reacting? You have three. You have two NOs and a BR, okay? That means all three of those things are reacting simultaneously, um, which is rare, okay? So what they're saying here is this is probably a multi-step process because what are the chances that all three of these are gonna collide at the same time, right away, to make your product, okay? So, um, in this case, here are the steps that um, it can be broken down to. NO plus BR2 react to make NOBR2. Then NOBR2 reacts with the other NO to make a, a second NOBR, okay? Um, the rate law, like keep in mind, it says the, fat, the first step is initial, which means the second step is the slower one, okay? Or the first step is fast, I mean, that's what it's saying, which means the second step is a slower one. Okay, so we need to talk about that for a minute, about how you would write a rate law for that, okay? Because here's the problem. If you write a rate law based on step two, okay, so follow me here then you're writing an inter, like, so we would write the rate law, and I'll show you on the board, okay? Because I 